All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video, and today we'll be taking on the brand new Memory of Chaos using our Bootle. Now, our Bootle is at E0S0 because we are F2P, and we will also be using a team of our Ruan Mei because I do not have Ruan Mei on this account, so we can't use her. So what we're going to be doing is replacing her with Bronya and seeing whether an E0S0 Bootle without Ruan Mei can uh, clear Memory of Chaos. Now, we will also be using a Dr. Ratio team, which is also pretty free-to-play friendly because we have neither... Topaz nor Robin, so we're using Tingin and Silverwolf instead. So I'd say this is a pretty free-to-play friendly clear of Memory of Chaos, but with that being said, let's just get right into it. Alright, and here we are now starting off, we get to use our Aventurine Technique once, but unfortunately we only get the lowest roll. And what we're gonna do here now is just make sure we get all our energy on our Tingin, place down Ratio's Taunt, and then go into our Silverwolf. And, okay, very nice. Now, let's see. Will we get an imaginary weakness here? Yes, we do. Okay, I had to restart once because we got a quantum weakness instead of imaginary right away. And I want to take care of this guy first because he can CC our team, which is quite annoying. I know we have a Ventrine, but I'd rather just avoid it just in case. And let's see. 24k on the skill and 45k on the follow-up. Now, obviously, our damage will slowly ramp up, so I am hoping to see even bigger numbers. How much do we hit on the break? 51k. I will gladly take that. We can also get the defense shred off of Silver Wolf's ult and this will proc another attack which will deal 73k. So there you go. This is the power of an F2P Doctor Ratio. Now I'm, I am going to put uh, a Ventry and Steve off on this one just so we can first of all break them a little bit more and then we can also just get the crit damage buff on them because I feel like this one is going to go down pretty soon since, you know, Dr. Rage is doing quite a fair bit of damage here. Now, let's see. Okay, they're probably not going to die here, although 43 and 76k, so we did like 129k in that turn. I will gladly take. Also, we went quite a few times in the first cycle. I think that's thanks to the fact that a lot of our characters are like giga buffed on speed, like ra uh, ratios on 1 4. 40 speed, I think, or 140 something. So he goes quite often, which I will gladly take. Uh, okay, he does still have the res penetration debuff on him. Actually, wait, he still has the weakness on him, so that makes sense. Uh, what do I want to do here? Do I want to ult on Tingy? Mm. Okay, I don't know if I want to ult here on Tingy or not. I could ult now on ratio, use his ult, and then have it up for his turn. Actually, I think I'm just going to let the NG go to waste, then I can skill here on ratio, hit, and then ult the other one, because this one is about to die. And now buff our ratio with our Tingyun, and that will also forward the turn order. Yeah, I feel like we made the right play here. And then here we can just target the... Uh, yeah, I target the other one here, so that we will proc the... Um, follow-up attack, get the defense shred off first, because this will be a nice 49k. And now, with all the debuffs on, we're gonna hit 52k. Okay, then, I will take that. Oh, we don't have our Tingin buff up. Uh, that's unfortunate. Anyway, get the res shred on him as well, get Tingin's buff. Skill on this guy, this should hopefully kill, so that the follow-up attack will transfer. Yes, it will. Beautiful. 81k on the follow-up attack. Thank you very much. Now I will I'll just ult this guy once again. We can now ult on our ratio, hit this guy again. This will trigger another follow-up attack. I feel like we should kill him before it gets to our ratio's turn. Maybe he dies in the next follow-up attack. At least I hope so. 77k. No, just about survives. Uh, he's not gonna live for long though. You know what? I can just um save him here and then ult once again. And then we can easily take him down with a skill. And yeah, I mean, we've basically cleared this wave in the 28th cycle, which is very nice for us. Now let's just hope this goes over to kill the other dog. Actually, it would have been nice if this hit the other one, but it is what it is. Oh, well, now do I want to use my ratio alt is the question when do I use it? I don't know if I want to save it for the next rotation or if I just want to clear this one as quick as possible. I mean, to be fair, we do get a fair bit of energy from this. Uh, memory buff. So maybe here we get imaginary weakness. Yes, we do. Beautiful. And we can take this one down. Ooh, actually, maybe I should have altered the other one and then just skilled this guy and hoped that this skill hit the other guy. Because now we are going to lose the alt. 
uh, slight misplay on my part, but it shouldn't be too bad. Oh, I really wanted us to proc the fall attack there. That is unfortunate. Um, no issue. We can stack. We since we have quite a fair bit of skill points. Uh, actually, one's gonna go to waste there, but we can skill here, and then now we will hit and kill. We won't get our ratio alt, unfortunately. But oh, never mind. We will get our ratio alt. Okay, cool. And since we're so fast, we get to go before all the enemies. Very nice. Now, what order do I want to do this in? I think I'll go into ratio alt first, into Tingyan alt for ratio, so that obviously all his hits will do bigger damage. And now we can go into a Silver Wolf alt for the defense shred. And bang, 50k into the crit damage increase from our Aventurine. For how much damage? We get 58k. That's a nice 8k increase. Thank you very much. And we're actually pretty close to getting our ult up once again. Oh, and he is weakness broken, which is nice. We can ult again. Oh, actually, maybe I shouldn't have ulted because this is kind of a waste of a turn. Maybe we'll just go for this guy instead and then hopefully we'll get a few hits on him sometime soon. Mm, it would be nice here if we would get our ult. No, ju just about miss it, but that's fine. Our shields aren't the highest right now, but it shouldn't be a big problem. We're still in the 27th cycle though, which is nice. I will gladly take that. Just making sure no one here dies. 78k. How much do we hit here? 81k. Very nice. I love Dr. Ratio, man. It's been a while since I've used him, but oh, I can't wait to use him in the new game mode as well. He seems like he's going to be really... I haven't seen the new game mode, but I mean, I'm sure it's going to be single target, so... You know, he should be pretty strong in it now. Okay, luckily, Japad did hit our Aventurine. If he had hit one of Ratio or Tingin, that would have been a bit unfortunate, but luckily, he's a bit silly. And just look at the amount of debuffs they have on Japad. Like, that's just insane. No wonder he's taking so much damage. Well, honestly, I really like this team with Tingin and Silverwolf. It would be nice if he had, like, some action forwards with, like, uh, I don't know, what's the, what's the name again? Sparkle or something, but, you know. Tingin can't go wrong with Tingin. Now, let's see, how much damage do we do hit? 72k. Okay, now, what I'm gonna do is, I will use the ult on... Ah, oh, no, I should have used the ult on the other one, because Japan's gonna die soon anyway, so this is probably gonna waste a ton. Mm, yeah, slight misplay on my part. Damn it. Uh, it's fine. Oh, actually, you know what? No, now it's fine, because we get to save our turns there. Okay, it wasn't a problem, it wasn't a problem. We should be fine. Also, we still have a lot of turns to take this guy down. Like, we should be safe and sound. 42k, 76. Thank you for the, what is that, like, 128k or something like that, I think. Dude, I just love, I just love Silver and sing, Single Target just for the sheer amount of debuffs she gives us. It's just so nice. I am going to skill her just to make sure we have maximum uptime. Uh, hopefully, we'll get a bunch of ults in a second. We will also get our Tingyan ult here, which means we get our Ratio ult fun as ever oh we also got another turn on our, on our event train which is again very nice 63k on the ult i will take that that's not normally our main source of damage but you know it is what it is okay follow-up attack there uh, if, um if a venturing follow-up attack there would have been really nice but alas it is what it is 79k and this will proc the final follow-up attack which should kill and there we go we just about cleared in all our cycles. So with that being said, it's on to Bootle now. Okay, well we had to retry because of getting CC'd to high hell and back, but it's fine because we can go again. Now then, the plan this time is going to be, first of all, don't get CC'd. Nice. Okay, uh, that I can live with that. It shouldn't be too much of a problem. Now we are going to start off by targeting this guy because he can do his annoying big hit on his second turn so what we're going to do first of all is get a stack of trick shot by targeting this guy now go into now it would have been nice here if we had two uh smaller enemies to break so we could get two stacked before fighting the bosses but this will be fine instead now we can go into a 1v1 with this guy get ourselves our alt and basically we're going to be able to delay the other enemy's action because she can cc us so there we go, and she has gone all the way down to the next cycle, which is nice. Okay, that's a big hit, but it should be fine. 
and we'll also get to avoid being CC'd here. Now, I am just going to ult here on a Harmony Trailblazer, just so that we have the buff up. And, yeah, now we just... Uh, do I want skill or normal attack? That's a good question. Actually, I'm going to do skill here, because what we can do on a Gallagher is we can go into a skill, into an ult, into... Sorry, into a basic, into a ult, into another basic, which will give us more SP, and then we should also get one from our Bronya ult. So there we go. Now we can hit this guy for 123k. Very nice damage. Alt here, get ourselves another skill point. Now the nice thing here about Bronya's Light Con and then also having her E1 is we just get a lot of skill points to use here. Uh, I am going to break this guy as well. Uh, I was hoping that would delay his action a little bit more, but it should be fine. Actually, we could try ult him into tomorrow. Never mind, he's just going to go after this guy. But it's fine, we have 58k on the ult there. This guy is nearly dead to bleed. I feel like later on I'm just going to finish him off with an ult or something. Or maybe, uh, if he still has bleed on him, that would be nice, but I'm not too sure. Anyway, please don't CC. Nice, there we go. Okay, we haven't gone and CC'd in this run, which is very good. It's a nice thing she keeps targeting Gallagher because he does have very high effect res. But yeah, that being said, we, I think now we can target her because she tends to be a bit more annoying. So now she's going to be gone, basically. Maybe we get, maybe we'll even kill her. I'm not too sure if we will. Although we should do decent damage. 185k. I've seen our Bootle do over 200k before. Which, you know, oh, we even dodged the effect res with our Branya. That's very nice. Oh, okay, never mind. She did basically die. Okay, cool. She's going to die to bleed anyway, so... That's nice. We are going to refresh our alt here because this will give our Bootle another 30 break effect because of the set. Uh, I am going to do the same thing here on Galango where we get to uh, get another turn. We are on five, Actually, since we are on 5 skill points, I could actually just heal up my Bronya. It is better to be safe than sorry. Now we're just going to E here and actually it would be better if we use our alt here just so that we don't waste any energy. And, okay, lovely, 38k there on the ult. It's, you know, some nice additional damage. But here is where the real hit comes in. We hit 186k, thank you very much, and he is dead. Lovely, okay. Now, hopefully we don't get CC'd by her. Bronya, thank you so much for dodging with the effect res. Unfortunately, Harmony Trailblazer isn't going to be as lucky, but we already have their ult up, so it's not going to cause us any huge issues. Okay, we have our Enhanced Basic, but we're about to get our ult anyway, but I feel like I can just save it for the time being. Now, the question is, who do I want to target first? I feel like this one is actually more annoying with how she can CC us. So now what we're going to do is just ult with our Bronya, so our ult will do a little bit more damage. Actually, no, you know what? We're going to ult Kafka, push her further down in the turn order, and start working on breaking her, because since I don't have her one mate, I can't break her in two hits. We're, because we don't have the weakness break efficiency and our bootle just does does just a little bit less than half on bosses like Kafka But his uh, free stack trick shot will do enough to take out um, This kind of like the elite enemies in two shots anyway I'll just scale for our because the thing is our isn't getting healed by our Galaga because she isn't doing any damage Okay um, yeah, we're gonna get our ult here. We keep hitting like 180k's, which is a good damage that I will happily take. Now, once again, we can ult Kafka. Unfortunately, it's not gonna push her too far down in the turn order, but that should be fine. Uh, you're gonna die here, 121k. Sure, that works. And then we have a lot of turns to take out Kafka, so I actually think we're gonna end up clearing her. Now, once again, we get our ult up for the break effect boost and everything that comes with... Galaga isn't going to have his ult this turn. It would have been nice if he used his enhanced basic when she's broken because it would have done more damage, but it's fine. Anyway, here we will be able to break her after using our... But, uh, I meant to run your ult there. Whoopsies. It, I mean, it should be fine because of how much energy this half gives us, but... Anyway, we hit 200... We hit 285k on Kafka and 58k on the bleed as well. That's crazy right there. That is brutal power, if I've ever seen it. And this is damage without Ruanmei. So, you know, take from that what you will. Uh, okay, do I want to do the thing where I... Okay, yeah, I'm going to normal attack there. And the thing, question is, do I want to heal up anyone manually? Now, the thing is, I am missing one of Galaga's major traces, which would have made him heal the entire team there. 
you know, what I'm going to do once again is first of all use his ult so that we, because if we just use the two basics there, we would not have been able to break. But because we use the ult, we will be able to break here. At least I think we should. Uh, I am a massive liar, but it's fine because our Homni Trailblazer will be able to break. It won't do as much damage as our Bootle would have, but will be fine either way. Now the thing is, I think Bootle will get another turn. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, we're gonna win here because we can hit 227k there, and then we can hit how much on the ult? 59k, I've seen more, but it's fine. Go again on Bronya, and then we should honestly be able to clear this with a turn left to spare. What would be really funny is if Kafka would have died to the bleed, but we wouldn't be able to kill her in time, and she's in the next turn, so we would have 19 cycle, but no, we will be fine either way, so... And we also get even more energy, which is just a nice bonus, which means now we can hit here. Our Galaga will do how much damage? Obviously, Galaga would do more damage with Ruan Mei. I feel like the Ruan Mei variation is better just because your entire team will do more damage because of, obviously, all the buffs that Ruan Mei clears. And there we go. We clear while still being able to have another turn on our Bootle as well as his ult. So, yeah, we actually cleared quite convincingly there in the final cycle. As you can see, no Ruan Mei, no Light Cone, no Eidolons, no problem. Bootle is perfectly functional at E0, a very good free-to-play unit. You don't even need to use any 5-star Light Cones on him. You can run a Preservation Light Cone on him for, survi for survivability or Abundance Light Cone, whatever. And yeah, he will still get the job done. So yeah, if don't doubt Bootle. The thing is, I really love Bootle's gameplay just because you do kind of need to think a little bit more with the enemies that you're breaking and playing him optimally, which I actually really enjoy as opposed to just like going, for example, Don Hung Ill, just free spam alt or just Jing Liu, just E. I actually really, really enjoy Bootle's playstyle. He might have one of my favorite playstyles in the game. But with that being said, uh, yeah, we managed to clear quite handily with both teams, and with that being said, let us move on to the character builds. Alright, and there you go. So as it turns out, a free-to-play boot hill without Rowan Mei definitely can clear Memory of Chaos. So with that being said, let us quickly move into our builds. When it comes to our boot hill, he has a fair bit of HP just, you know, to make sure he can tank. Quite a lot of attack because his main body piece is on attack. I will move on to that in a second. One for full speed, which is the bare minimum you would kind of hope for. He is on the cruising in the stellar sea icon just for some extra curate and attack, but to be honest, it doesn't really do much in the long term. The main thing is that we do have 222 break effect on him. That is coming from the fact that we are on a two piece, two piece set, so we get 32 break effect from this. You know, our uh, helmet doesn't give us 18.7% break effect. We get 18.1 here, 11.6 here, which isn't that much, but it's the most I could get on this set to complete the two piece, two piece. And then on our boots, we also have 11.6. So, you know, we could get more break effect, but it's an okay amount here. We also have 11.6 on our sphere. Honestly, I feel like if I level up more pieces, I could have a bit more break effect. The issue I have is that I have basically run out of material. So if we just take this, for example, I have basically no materials to level up my relics with. And then on our rope, we have... Obviously, it's a break effect main piece. We don't have any speed on here, unfortunately, but it's fine because we still have the 134 that we need. When it comes to our Bronya, she's also on 134 speed, but luckily she is slightly slower, so she will go after our boot hill. She is on her signature icon, although this doesn't change much for our boot hill. What is nice is that in our boot hill summons, if you watch those, you would have seen that we got an E1 Bronya, which can help with our SP sometimes. 2P speed, 2P HP, you know, it's a Bronya, it's what you'd expect. Our Harmony MC is on 218 break effect herself. And then obviously with her E4, she will give 15% of that to our boot hill, which will raise his break effect. And yeah, 146 speed, just decently fast on the break effect light cone, so we can get her ult up quite a bit. Uh, we are on a break effect rope as well, so which is what helps her get so much break effect. So yeah, you know, it's kind of just the pieces we would have used on our boot hill otherwise, but you know, boot hill comes first because we want him to do the most damage we possibly can. And then when it comes to our Gallagher, I was just recently building him. He is only level 70 right now, but his stats are good enough. He does have basically 60 effect res, which is nice for the light cone we are using on him. Uh, traces are partly leveled up, and then, you know, just making sure his relics are good enough. They don't need to be anything special. I did have to retry a few times because we would sometimes get CC'd or die, but, you know, nothing too bad in the grand scheme of things. Now, when it comes to our Dr. Ratio, he is on 79.5 crit, but... This can go up to about 98% when you take into account all the buffs 
And then obviously whenever this passive procs, it does go way over 100%, which is nice. 164 crit damage, but this will go to above 200, including buffs and also the fact that we have broken kill on three of our teammates. So at times this turns into 98 to 220, which I will gladly take, which is why I do run them on this light gun instead. Uh, when it comes to the pieces themselves, they're fairly decent. If you didn't realize, our entire Doctor Ratio team is actually really fast. Like, if we just go over their speed real quick, Ratio is on 140. I mean, we can ignore Ventrine because he's a bit slower, but then, you know, 152 speed here and then 150 speed on our Tingyun. So, yeah, pretty insane. Anyway, quickly for our uh, Silver Wolf build this is how she looks just making sure she can get her ult as much as we can making sure she has survivability and enough effect hit rate similar thing for tingyun just making sure we hit all the stats that we need it's nothing major but yeah that's basically it for our character builds nothing special as you can see a pretty free-to-play friendly clear of memory of chaos hopefully you guys enjoyed hopefully you guys found this helpful in some way and yeah with that being said i hope you guys enjoyed and i will see you guys next time be sure to subscribe and see ya